Hello, welcome. How's everyone? <laughs> can you see? Can you hear us, Lisa? So, I can. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are people getting on to see us? So they are. We've got. YouTube. We've yeah. We've got four. We're broadcasting over two YouTube channels, and anyone that's got okay. the link on Facebook can watch us. So welcome everybody to All In. Lisa and Steve are back. You thought, well, no, we're living miles apart now. We are back. We have returned to the world of live streaming. The Richard and Judy of the Collective Old Oak, as I called yeah. ourselves. Yeah. We, we couldn't help ourselves. We, we wanted to do this. Hey, who's this? Naveen, who I know is at the Collective. He's saying hello. Hi, Naveen. Great to have Hi, you Naveen. watching us. Thank you. You're not met Lisa. You will do soon. She was, she's coming back. She's coming back. So. Oh, that's cool. Well, yes, yeah, so me and Steve used to live in a group for people who don't know. James is here. Hello, James Nicky. Oh, this is nice. Oh, um, oh I think your fan base are coming in, Lisa. I know you've got a, a wide yeah. fan base. Sharon Fryer. Yeah. Hello. So while people Aww. are just joining us, um, just to give you a bit of background, so me and Steve used to live uh, in a co-living community. Um, so two years, two and a half years ago, I moved in and we were next door neighbours and um, through the lockdown, we used to actually stream live, you know, when people couldn't meet up in person. What we, we did a business kind of um, gathering, like we couldn't give business hive mind, so like business networking on, on Zoom. We did, we even did Friday night drinks, didn't we? Um, on yeah. Zoom, all these different Zoom things we were doing. Um, and, and you know what, through the whole lockdown as well, we had so many chats about things. This is what kind of is behind our idea of just doing these, I've been calling it Tuesday night chats, uh, like, I don't know, all in Tuesday night chats or something. We need to think of a name for this. But, um, <laughs> well, you, yeah. you started a Facebook group, didn't you, called All In? And we yeah, were like, so yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, so and basically, I mean, this topic, so over these Tuesdays, it'll be every fortnight at 7 p.m. And we want to talk about a range of topics, you know, that basically is all about going all in with our life, with our year, you know, with each area of our lives. And we're sharing <clears throat> different areas like of interest and, and kind of getting you to join in, getting you to share any insights or tips or anything that you know that would be valuable for other people. And then we're going to open it out for experts as well to come in and share their knowledge and, you know, just all kind of like learn from each other and grow together. Um, and so, you know, we're going to talk on a range of topics from, um, so tonight is alternative medicine, um, cacao ceremonies, uh, law of attraction, like loads of things. Got loads of, me and Steve could talk all literally daily on loads of topics. Fact, I'll, I'll let you share a secret. When we lived next door to each other, we would share a kitchen that was quite close to the corridor and which was quite close to other people's rooms. We would be talking at like 2 or 3 a.m., fully <laughs> unaware of the time we were so immersed in the conversation. And I think Lisa knows everything. I think the only, the only thing you don't know about me is what my kidneys look like. And I don't even know what they look like. So you know everything. I think that's the thing isn't it, about living in a co-living community. You really get to know people. Anyone that, that's been in a student halls of residence will know this that you spend quality time with people and you really get to know each other on a deep level. And I certainly feel I shared a lot with you, Lisa, you shared a lot with me. And we would get told off at 3 a.m. People would bang on the door, say, can you go to sleep? And we're like, what's the time? Look, it's 3 a.m. And we go, oh, really? Oh, OK. So, yeah, so it's funny times. We can talk forever. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we thought, you know what, we... we, we have so much to say on these things we do a lot of research ourselves we know a lot of people we're both very connected so why not put it out there and just start actually broadcasting this and and get used to going out live again on you know um streaming live and so tonight we thought yeah this is something that we talk about so often like i have really fond memories even though they're hard times of being in that kitchen and <laughs> me when i first started getting not like getting ill um i went back to work for the nhs through the pandemic loads of stress 
no, not all the rest of it. Um, and I started getting kind of ill with things. Like my, my health just started to deteriorate because of all the long long hours and stuff. And I started resorting to what I knew were good methods, such as acupuncture and um, Chinese herbs. And we would have laughs at all. You know, some of the things I used to have to do, like choking back these awful tasting water, these herbs I've been boiling up and... I don't even, I can't even remember now. Some of the things, but like Steve always used to say, we've got to share about this. Like you I need remember, to... I used to tell you, I said, you need to document this. You need to be doing little, like, is it vlog posts every day of you drinking the manky water, you <laughs> doing whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. You used to yeah. show me this stuff, and it's like, oh my God, where'd you find that? Kind of, and yeah. between and us then both. You're drinking we... it, right? <laughs> yeah and between us both you know we've done a lot we've done a lot for our health and we also you know we're open-minded to hear what could be good you know and and as i said we, we have a lot of connection with people so we just thought we would kind of go through some of the areas and the i guess talking point of alternative health and I well if i could bring you in what the point that you raised on this topic yeah. when you pitched this to me that what's seen as alternative is actually the norm but we've lost it. Do you want to say a bit more about that? Well, yeah, I mean, so, you know, this is the original medicine. Like, so what the, the, the healthcare we know of is mainstream healthcare. It's mainstream medicine, modern day medicine, however you want to call it. Um, but what does that consist of? That consists of a quick, um, you know, rapid GP appointment, if you're lucky. Nowadays, it's actually having a quick phone call, trying to show your dodgy mole a phone call under your armpit or whatever you've got going on. Like, how is that? Like, anyway, like, so, you know, we're, we're really kind of stuck in this um, quick, fast-paced, like, one in immediate results kind of uh, modern mainstream medicine approach. Um, and most often, it, it tends to be pharmaceuticals that they want to give you to kind of just get the quick fixes. And actually... Within, with within minutes... I know people yeah. that have gone and said they felt anxious or depressed and they've been, you know, they've been given the smarties, as people call it. And they're like, whoa, you haven't even asked me any detail about if you've like prescribed. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that is, in itself is a massive subject. You know, I come from where I've worked in the NHS. I've come from healthcare, and, you know, um, it's strange. You know, there's so there's too many people for the system and the, the time that, you know, they, they have allotted to see people. So it's one of those things, I guess. It's very strange. But, uh, but the thing is also we're, we're living in this kind of real fast paced society where people just want quick fixes. Um, and so it, that's just where we found ourselves. But I find it interesting that actually there's there seems to be like a rise in conditions or health challenges that people are having that these quick fixes aren't fixing and there, there are no quick fixes for them and you've really got to like um go through the layers to explore and experiment and find out what the hell's going on at the root of it you know so any kind of like a lot of digestive issues like ibs i mean ibs said they just rule out and say that's it you've got it for life kind of thing there's nothing that can be done um i beg to differ <laughs> um yeah. and then, like, uh, there's a lot of kind of autoimmune, um, not autoimmune diseases, but things connected to autoimmune responses, um, such as, you know, like fibromyalgia or um, lupus or I don't even know. There's, there's so many, like ME even, like they're, they're connected to that. Even endometriosis, I'm starting to realize, could be connected to the immune system. The, the, the fact that our immune system isn't working properly. Um, and so these things, they're not able to give quick fixes on. Apparently, the, the average... Um, time from like having symptoms to actually being properly diagnosed and starting to get treatment for endometriosis is 10 years which is unbelievable wow. so a wow. lot of there seems to be a lot of reproductive health issues or even i guess stress related issues and um, psoriasis can be one of them as well that they just can't seem to get to the bottom of and you know all these quick fixes aren't fixing them and so people are now starting to move away and having to look at different, you know, approaches. And so now all of a sudden, there's this uh, other modalities coming in, which, I mean, I I actually began as a complementary therapist um, in, what was it now, like, I don't know, 2001 or something, doing reflexology, aromatherapy, all these things. And it was coined then alternative medicine. And I really didn't get it because it, like, it has its roots in ancient practices. You know, it's the original medicine, but yet it's kind of seen as this taboo, shuff, you know, shifted to the side kind of 
treatments. So yeah, so this is what we wanted to kind of talk about. We wanted to kind of uh, um, discuss and chat around the taboos around it, actually kind of maybe, I don't know, we want to bring in people as well. So does anyone listening in and has any information, has any kind of specialism in these areas, has any experience, we want to hear about it because we were saying there's so much there's so much out there and it's not regulated it's not clear people don't know where they're going like i know i'm being overwhelmed by trying to do this that the other like trying to do all these things and you don't actually know if any of them really work and there are some companies or i guess organizations that are um what would you say like uh taking advantage of people you know like this big time i think this yeah because our our whole existence is based on our health isn't it? our performance in work our energy that we have during the day i think you know certainly without getting political and going into detail but the past two years have really brought this to you know the forefront and i think what we believe and what organizations we now trust in isn't it i think where there is so much evidence that what we're being told and what we should do and line up and do and just accept is not working for everyone well yeah, yeah. i think no cool at least can i just say what kind of prompted this if i because I, I i i don't know i don't know why i'm doing this actually but i don't know if you heard of these i'm not i'm not marketing these this is a qvc but i saw this on facebook okay these natural cleansing foot pads okay and I'll show you a little picture of how they're supposed to work. So you stick these like tea bag things on your feet before you go to bed every night. And it's supposed to suck all your bad toxins out overnight. So when you, you can see that there's a foot pad being removed there. It looks manky brown, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, that's that's been removed. And um, so I've been doing this for the past few weeks. And um, this is last night. <laughs> this, this is last night's. <laughs> kind of result. And I don't know if I believe I don't know if I believe this is coming out of me I don't know if I believe this is doing anything for me I don't know why I'm doing it even it's kind of thing my mother told, told me to do when I was a kid or something I think isn't it part I remember part of like old medicine poultice they call the poultice where you you put like a wrap a tight wrap around you and it put it brings stuff to the surface I think it's operating on that. <laughs> what, Lisa? What? You, I'm not feeling any different, but I'm waking <laughs> up every morning. Yes. I'm waking up with manky feet every morning, <laughs> and I'm nearly running. I won't be renewing this, I don't think. But um, what what do you know of of all this? Well, first of all, I think one, and we we're going to talk about it at the end. It is everything, and if we're doing something and we just don't believe in it. I feel like that's a block to any kind of um, results coming through. You know, if our mind is not really not coming, like not behind it. Um, you know, hypnotherapy. We say like, if the person just isn't open and receptive to the hypnotherapy, it's not really going to work um, as much as it will do with, if someone's really believing and really open to it. So I think if you carried on doing it and you did, like you, you, you could do an experiment and have someone who totally believes in it. They probably would get great results and if you didn't you know there's, there's that kind of element to it um but also like you said it this ha probably has or it ha definitely has origins of um what do you call it like ancient roots so um i remember um i don't even know my grandma or something telling me that um i don't know if it's like uh, Eastern European or something where actually if you had a flu or a cold it was known to put chopped up onions in your socks at night. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Socks. So there's different things like that and when I was in Guatemala I, I worked in a natural healing centre we used to use ionising foot baths. So this was a foot bath that used iron therapy like lots of um, free irons or whatever and that would draw out from the body any kind of toxins i might not be explaining this right because it was many years ago um but people used to come they like we would put them on there was a protocol that they would use and that was part of the protocol um and it was all about drawing out the toxins and the color of the water represented what was coming out and it did discolor differently for different people so the the, the potentially has got you know background in it i wouldn't say but i find it interesting the 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 measures we will go to in order to kind of get something from it. Um, yeah. One thing I wanted to say with this is 
again, this isn't quick fix. So this is allowing the body to come back into color, like into homeostasis, so to come back into balance. So if, if say, for example, we're doing something like that, but we're drinking loads of alcohol or eating, say, McDonald's, it's not going to come into balance. We need to put the right fuel in in order to kind of, um, you know, remove the right toxins and completely remove toxins. But then also we have to do this rebalancing sometimes for a certain amount of time for the body to then go back into the full rebalance. So they say, you know, um, different parts of our body regenerates at different levels. So say, for example, our eyes, we have fresh, like our cell, cells in the eyes regenerate every two weeks. Um, wow, I remember okay. learning this from biology. So, um, in that sense, you can actually rectify like um, deterioration in the eye in your eyesight. But it takes a lot of different things. It takes like acupuncture, different nutrition, new, um, different nutritional things, and also like exercise in the eye and do all these different things. Like, but it, it's always a multifaceted approach. You know, have to do it on different levels. It's not just one approach. But you need to do it in a certain amount of time for the body to regenerate all those cells. So then all of those cells then are in balance. So say, for example, something like detoxification, it can take up to 120 days for your body to fully go into balance again, because that's how long it takes for the uh, um, red blood cells to have a lifespan. So that, that has that, to be our, our action has to be habitual. We can't just expect yeah. like we said the the McDonald's drive-through mentality where we get instant gratification we need to discipline ourselves and commit to this journey if we're going to get the result yeah in and it depends on obviously how long we've had any issues um i think sometimes you can just literally remove something out of your diet or or whatever and that can actually have a massive effect straight away like coffee for example um so it's not necessarily everything but you know like generally yeah, it takes being patient and also doing different things um so yeah but i definitely think you know like if you actually found a belief in it and you did it for long enough why not why not? that yeah. why that's the thing it's about demystifying all these things as well isn't it like there's so many of these things and there's so many companies promoting this that and the other but you don't know where to turn and you don't know who to trust and you know, these days, just because you read it on the internet and they're claiming things or they're quoting things doesn't mean, say, it's actually true. So it can be really overwhelming for people, I think. We've got some audience feedback now. Um, James, totally agree, and attended something like the MBS show recently. That mind, body, spirit. I see that. Mm. It's Lisa the star of that. Um, made me realise just how much there is out there, so many different modalities. He's had experience of the manky foot patches as well. Um, sticky feet in the morning, yes. And who we got? We got uh, Sharon Fry. I fully agree to the fact that natural healing takes time and consistency. There are no quick fixes when you've done things for years. Yeah, I want to show you this actually because I found this that while we were exploring this, it's not something I um, believe in. So I'm just sharing this with you. Let me just turn that comment on. Um, yeah, so I found this. This is interesting. The greatest evil trick played upon mankind was teaching man that his body's self-cleaning programs are diseases that require poisons for treatment. Again, that's quite controversial. <laughs> but um, what do you think of that? That we're, a lot of the stuff we're, we're not allowing the body to just heal. You know, if you get a flu, yeah. so many people around this time of year getting common colds. Is I've read, I've heard that we have most of us have a very high acidic diet, and our body reacts. To that and that's where we get flu we can get flus or it's the body trying to pure and rebalance itself and we're thinking oh my god i'm ill and the body and we kind of then force a load of other medicines and stuff down our throats to and it's actually if we just left our flu to play out it would just next it's our natural body process we're, we're kind of naturally constantly self-healing and yet we don't trust ourselves we don't trust the, we've been programmed otherwise by doctors and etc well what do you think of that Lisa? yeah <clears throat> yeah you're right like um i was taught that that basically um when we think that we are ill it's actually our body like making making us stop making us kind of slow down so it can actually start the healing process so the illness already kind of, so blues and colds i've recently kind of learned through i guess nutrition and natural natural i'm gonna say this right natural 
naturopathy, <laughs> naturopathy, naturopathy. Um, speaking to nat like naturopathic um, specialists, that yeah, it's it's the release of toxins from our body. So when our body gets to a, too much of a toxic level, it then needs to release. And so it tends to be like when it's cold, you know, when it's cold, or when we're around people who have uh, freely disposing of their toxins and we're taking them on board, that then our body then needs to release the toxins. So um, we don't, you know, there's that kind of belief of if we go outside, my nan always used to say this: if you go outside without wrapping your neck up or whatever, you'll get a cold or a flu. Or if you're near someone at work and they cough and they have the flu, then you can get the, the flu. Um, but I really, I, I actually believe that if you are, you know, of optimal health and you're doing all the right things and your body, you're not toxic in your body, there's no reason why you will get that flu just because the person has it next to you. Um, yeah, and I agree. That's my experience. Yeah. So, and I think, yeah, so you're right. Like the more we can just allow our body to go into the healing when you think about it, our body's always healing. The healing process is always going on. Like I had a cut the other day. I don't even know how it how it happened, and I was just like, my God, it's actually one of my thumbs. Like I gauged a big load of you know skin out of my thumb, and it came knocking off. And I, was I won't like, ask what you were doing. I won't ask what you were doing. So. <laughs> no, Andy, I think it was when I was putting <laughs> like I was putting washing away in this new cupboard, and it was a bit sharp on the shelf, and I caught it. I didn't notice at the time, and then suddenly, you know, like an hour later, I see his blood there, and I'm like, "Oh, I just cut myself." You know, you know, but my body's already dealing with it, already getting yeah, the scab, yeah. and and then eventually, like, but then the scab kept, you know, knocking off, and then it then reformed itself again, and it's just like that's amazing. It, the body has this natural, um, you know, wisdom, in wisdom to do that, yeah. and it and it does that on all level but sometimes it's like if we're not giving it the right fuel and we're not in the right environment and we're not we're not giving ourselves the right rest then it can't engage in this healing process yeah. so that's when you know when that kind of adds up and stacks up over time we then start to get more ill so i was talking about my situation i ended up going back to the nhs <clears throat> I wasn't used to working in that kind of high intensity, like massive stress. It's obviously COVID times, but wearing all the you know big gear, the the PPE stuff. Um, no breaks hardly. Like people were sitting in the toilet having their lunch because there's no space because we had to, you know, um, social distance and stuff. So sometimes you thought, you know, sorry, I won't eat. <laughs> Um, and just and living on coffee, you know, living on coffee because I realised coffee feels I didn't need to eat and it gave me energy. It was so bad. And then we were working back to back shifts, all this crazy, like all this stuff. So my body wasn't allowed to heal. I was under stress. I was like over, you know, using all my calories. I was over physically like working all of the different things. I wasn't allowed. I wasn't able to go on nice walks, be in nature. I wasn't eating very well. You know, I wasn't able to go to yoga and all those things. So my body was not getting anything that it needed in order to keep in like equilibrium and to keep in balance. And so it only takes a matter of time for that to sustain itself. And then it like, it's amazing really. I managed to do a year of that. And then once I stopped, then all of the stuff came and I'm still now recovering from it. And it's what, I think it's like 18 months or something, nearly 18 months I've left. It it's taken that long for my body to recover because it just needed rest. So, so yeah. you, see this, you know, we hear about the NHS crisis. Is it about this? Is it about that the staff are burning out? Because, again, the help people that are there and employed to make other people healthy, they're not being respected themselves. So it's not about machinery. It's not about buildings. Is it about the actual energy of the people working within the system that's burning out is that what the crisis is because we hear this every day but it's never qualified is it i mean i i can't speak for that i don't know exactly what is going on in the nhs but i know uh in the fields i work in i know through friends who work in um so i work in operating theaters friends who work on the boards yeah it's to total it's just constant and it's stressful and um yeah like you just you you're pushed into bad eating habits and then well this is what we were saying not allowing our body to be tired when it's tired to rest mm. when it needs to rest to feel ill when it needs to be ill you know so if we were tired we'd have um coffee or some kind of caffeinated thing or when you're feeling a bit sluggish like chocolate or a snack when you're feeling ill i was having like, a cold and flu tablets because i knew that would push me through but like pushing through when you need to rest 
means yeah. that you're just playing the onset of the issue even more and it will it stacks up in the body yeah so um that's i mean look i think as well like we were saying just before the nhs is amazing we're so lucky to have it because you know um when you have an accident you know or when it's critical and urgent it's there and it's amazing um and there are times when we do need painkillers you know or we do need antibiotics you know we have a longer lifespan because of these things these advanced medical you know technologies are, are amazing but i think um the older generations kind of um how would you put it they they had blind faith in doctors and they just you know there was this this <clears throat> feeling of just do what the doctor says like the doctor knows best and i think i don't know i mean basically we've got that element of it in one one on one respect and also we kind of have for, forgotten how to take responsibility for our own health it feels like you know yeah, i think that big time eat badly and then you've either got like obesity or diabetes or gut health problems or whatever it might be you know actually we need to look at our eating habits not in, like have we ought to go to the doctors to then undo all you know the, the problems or you know there's there's lots of different things um like i guess drinking alcohol i joined a gp recently <clears throat> and they had like the questionnaire about your alcohol consumption i haven't done these questionnaires before and i was like oh my gosh like this is kind of making me out to be like i've got an alcohol problem but i have a few well i don't have as much now as I would have done before socializing but a few glasses of wine on a weekend and that's measuring like toxicity now like that's what they're kind of leading it towards and pretty much everyone I know has you know has a few drinks on the weekend yeah. and just is, is um what do you call it um our society the way that we are you know like the way when it's sunny a beautiful sunny day after work everyone wants to go to the pub or to the so park default isn't it and yeah so yeah, cultural, cultural programming cultural behavior park. is yeah we got yes. a few comments we got um sharon i'm a therapist and when my clients start implementing changes if they are consistent it always works um james again we live in a world of quick fixes fast food speedy deliveries medicine to stop the symptoms but don't always treat the cause yeah Definitely. Yeah. Um, Sharon, again, I was unable to get the COVID vaccine due to allergies to the ingredients in the shop. So I was participating in an ONS survey and they were testing for antibodies. After I tested negative a month, suddenly I started testing positive for antibodies. Hadn't even had a cold. Somehow with a high quality lifestyle, my body just knew what to do. Yeah, I think that is this is the world we're moving into now. People are realising you've got to trust yourself and that you can't trust the external world and what we're told certainly through the media you've got to trust your own gut but also i think the reason why i wanted to open this conversation out as well is um there are amazing modalities out there like there are you know there are the natural healing modalities there are they, you know they're also the kind of mainstream medicine approaches that really work too um and it's about kind of like sharing our experiences so that we can learn from each other you know, yeah, um, yeah. one thing I've been in so many different groups and forums and courses and all the bloody stuff. Like I've learned so much and I've learned, you know, not only through training and my own experience from, but from other people's experiences. So, you know, we thought we'd share, you know, so we want to open it out, like share if you've had any experiences with any um, natural healing modalities or, you know, however you want to call it, alternative medicine, um, yeah, share in the chat with us and, you know, we want to open this conversation out after this call as well and, and keep conversations going, you know, in the all in group. Um, and come because, back to this topic as yeah. well, probably, in the future. Weeks, that's what, yeah, that's what it's about, it's about like learning from each other, learning from experience. And so we wanted to share, like Steve's shared, um, I mean, Steve's come more prepared me with his, his pictures <laughs> and, and, and his actual demo. <laughs> I'm that kid at school that had the little project all done, all done perfect, yes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realise we were coming with the actual things. I should have got some of my soggy herbs to show you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, I wanted to share, I guess, yeah, like, so over the years, so I wanted to share some things that I know are, you know, common um practices now that people are kind of moving towards and interestingly actually i was looking into like private healthcare um and you know like what it covers these days and actually acupuncture is now being recognized on private healthcare as um just as 
good of a you know a, a route to healing as like physiotherapy and things and so they're actually covering that on private healthcare which is amazing and you know so um through uh the last what five years or so they're now bringing in like reflexology and reiki into um the hospital setting so mainly i think in the um, oncology um wards and and maybe like pain wards and things but uh, which is amazing you know so actually these alternative medicine practices now are getting in like you know they're realizing that they are the things that actually help and work um yeah. and they don't cost anything really in in the way that a lot of other things do i was gonna say it's all everything comes down to economics doesn't it and if this stuff is cheaper <laughs> Not only is it healthy, not only is it empowering individuals to take responsibility for managing their health, but if it's cheaper, it's going to save the, it's going to save the whole system a fortune. And then that money that's saved can then be moved to where it's needed. My, my, well, yeah. my experience of this meditation, I've been meditating for about, I don't know, um, my God, let's just look back. Since about 2010, I'll be doing it. So what's that? 12 12 years and i just i'm a man it's free it doesn't cost anything and it all it does it actually the only cost is your time the, and the discipline to do it and it has made a massive difference i'm yeah my i without a doubt i you quit the kind of analogy i give you know when your mobile phone is running low and you plug it in and you see the energy bar just start to zap up i think meditation does that when i'm ever fatigued like say a long day at work i just instantly lay down meditate for 15 minutes and all it is is breathing listening to a guided meditate and my energy is back yeah, yeah. and i just and so many people like when they say you know well, what do you do i say i meditate oh, i can't do that i've got the time and you're like wow well that's that's the issue yeah like the general issue isn't it but when you think about it we're saying that the body you know when you've got the flu or whatever like the body is actually healing itself it it has to take us out the way in order to allow that healing to happen so sometimes you know you you have to end up ill in bed like literally like knocked off your feet and then the healing occurs and it, it just shows like basically it needs us to consciously get out the way and let the subconscious do the work so it's literally the healing is coming subconsciously which is why i yeah. feel like Meditation is so powerful because we are not consciously engaging. We're actually, the, it's the subconscious or our unconscious, you know, a superconscious or whatever that's coming through. And so when we do that, we're, you know, like when we're in action mode, like this driving force, we're not, um, you know, like well, it's the different types of the nervous system being at play. It's, it's more of the, okay, let me get this right, the sympathetic nervous system that's kind of like, yeah, the fight or flight kind of nervous system. So most of the time when we're active and we're awake even, we're in flight or flight mode because, you know, the way that social media is, is like created, the way that just our whole lifestyles are, you know, getting, going commuting every day, whether you're driving a car or on the tubes or whatever, this fight or flight response, this stressy nervous system response is always going, you know, like they say sometimes when you are called into the office to your manager, like it's almost given the same um, nervous response as if like a lion was coming at you, you know, that same nervous response that we were given in the in the kind of like, our, you know, like uh, prehistoric times or whatever. So we're getting fired off but for the wrong reasons. And so we're living I, in fear. If people are living in fear permanently. Yeah, that's yeah. And this a frightened. drain on their energy, isn't it? Yeah. This fast, fast-paced way of living and the bombardment of all these these beats of information that our brain has can't it's too much to to process. Um, and so, what the body needs to do is to go into rest and digest, which is a parasympathetic nervous system. And so, what it is, so this is what we were looking at. So, but these main uh, modalities that people are looking to now are the ones that allow our bodies to come out of the stress response, out of this synthetic like override in the nervous system and go into the rest and digest so meditation is one of those ones but if someone is so used to being in this state of flight like you know high energy drama all of that kind of stuff if they and you know having those of coffees always on the go they're the ones who are going to say i can't do it it's too hard or i haven't got time because they're just not eat they're not um computing in that mode do you know what i mean it's yeah. just like they're but on they're, surely you crash at some point though you can't no one can sustain no, that kind of yeah 
Definitely people do. Um, and so this is the thing. So it's about like bringing in these um, methods and modalities and, and practices as well that actually allow our bodies to go into this rest and digest. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share, you know, like our body has the innate ability to rebalance itself. It always wants to go into homeostasis. Um, but, you know, the rebalance or the healing doesn't just happen on one level. So, you know, just because you take um, a, a, a supplement or, you know, you have a massage or you go and have physiotherapy, or whatever, it's not necessarily going to treat the whole, you know, your, your body holistically. Um, it, you know, our body is kind of multifaceted organism, so it needs to have the healing um, on all levels. And so when we go into rest and digest, if you think about it, like, what we what we take into our body like needs to be accounted for what how we eliminate like from our body needs to be accounted for and all the kind of environments we put ourselves in um and so yeah so it's it's kind of like it's looking at thing, things holistically um so i just wanted to share kind of a, like my experience over the years i was very science-based i came from you know i worked 20 years in um, med the medical profession working in anesthetics and surgery and then i um, specialized in recovery at the last part of things and i just observed you know the characteristics of patients who um, were undergoing similar types of surgeries you know so gynecology patients or pain um the chronic pain patients or even urology patients and like the you know the, the um patients with the gastric bonding or whatever like, like we do they have similar characteristics similar stresses similar life lifestyle kind of challenges similar outlooks you know like there's all this stuff going on and so if we ignore like if we have a lifestyle challenge like a lifestyle that we know isn't really good for us, but we keep ignoring it. And then if we have things that we allow ourselves to stress us, and then we have a mindset that doesn't look at the you know the bigger picture, we can start to develop, you know, chronic illness over time. Um, and, you know, like all these things, when they're suppressed and, and kind of ignored, it, it starts to build up. Um, and so, so we yeah, don't so, allow ourselves to relax, isn't it? If we don't yeah. take time to relax, we're inviting in overload. And, or relaxation, and like watching Netflix or or soaps on yeah, TV, it's actually quite toxic yeah. in their own way, in a way. Or you know, or what are you doing while you're watching Netflix? Are you eating chocolate biscuits? Or you know, like relaxation uh, on a Friday night might equal like going and drinking, but that's not actually good. It's not yeah. bringing the body into the rest and digest. So I wanted to share like, so some of the things I found that really helped me over the years, like from the beginning part, um, when I when I first had the fibromyalgia symptoms, I discovered yoga and meditation helped. So it's interesting you said that, Stephen, that was the first thing I discovered. Um, yoga I didn't necessarily enjoy, but I realized that was a form of meditation in itself. You know, anything we do physically, and we focus on it, it kind of brings us out of our head and into our bodies. So anything like that is good. Um, and so, yeah, yoga I found really, really helpful. And like also it's it's a form of self, self physiotherapy, I think almost, you know, like stretches you do, the movement that you do that moves the circulation, it frees up your tendons, your ligaments, all these different things. Um, it's like, so if nothing else, you're in some form of yoga or meditation or movement um, is so powerful and mindfulness I was actually introduced to mindfulness through a pain management program um, through the hospital which I found amazing it made me realize that the pain sometimes moved around my body so if it wasn't if it's moved from my right shoulder say for example then it means it's not chronically always there so it, if it can move then I can kind of remove it and I started wow, to realize okay. that I could do that and so when I realized that, then I realized, that, well, there's a power of the mind then. And then I started to look into, you know, sort of more things around the mind. I, I started working with hypnotherapy, went to a hypnotherapist to look at that, how I can release the focus around, you know, the pain. And, and so hypnotherapy is such an amazing modality um, that I would definitely uh, recommend people checking out. Like acupuncture is another one i could go on and on and on um i, I won't go on into all the different things but we're, we're doing uh, this every tuesday so <laughs> one of the I, I just found like categorically was the ancient practices of of medicine um 
are, are still being used today. And one thing I found absolutely mind blowing was in traditional Chinese medicine, apparently, I don't know if this still happens. I have asked people who um, have worked in Chinese medicine and they've said it, it they've known it to be true. Um, the doctors who look after their patients in Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, it's their responsibility to actually keep patients um, well. So they don't have sick patients like our doctors do. So, you know, we go to the doctor when we feel sick and they try and make us better. Whereas in traditional Chinese medicine, they have an allotment of patients. And when the patients then detect my energy levels are low or whatever, they go and get herbs or they go and get acupuncture or, you know, they do certain practices, I guess, um, whatever they do. But they, they uh, adjust their energy to realign themselves back into balance. And so apparently doctors were fine if they had ill patients. So like wow. okay. the so, was the fact that their patients all stayed well. And I yeah. love that principle. And the principle of acupuncture is, and also, I mean, uh, Chinese medicine, but also Ayurvedic medicine, which is a traditional Indian kind of medical philosophy. Um, they're very similar. And it works on the fact that we have energy systems in the body. Um, so it's meridians with the Chinese medicine and I think um, chakras in the Indian philosophy. And it's all about keeping those um, those uh, centers um, aligned, unblocked, and doing practices that keep them unblocked on a daily basis, whether that's you know, Qigong or um, what, what else is there, Tai Chi or, or those kind of practices, like or having reflexology or acupuncture having herbs you know doing movement like there's loads of things that do and it's all about like um what do you call it like creating energy in the body and and preserving energy in the body and and just kind of keeping yourself in the rest digest mode um so i, I think teach, there's not yeah. from that yeah sharon has said i offer a variety of massages you mentioned the reflexology and emotional freedom technique that's that thing isn't it that i am well is that the one where you go yeah because that sounds so, so bonkers, but if it works, doesn't it? And if it, and I do a, it's, I've always had sinus. It's working on the nervous I've, system. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not even it's not bonkers. as like there's there's um, credible kind of uh, information behind it, um, and I, I guess it's 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 basically bringing in again it's it's um, distraction for the mind, but then we're also we're affirming we're affirming what we want to go of and really reaffirming what we want to bring in and how we want our body to be and we're tapping it into our nervous system so um yeah so there's a lot of this yeah and it's basically energy medicine energy um, medicine that's, that's an interesting term i've not heard that wow um you and said as well you know the cacao ceremonies um is is one of the, the you know the, these kind of modalities as well and any kind of plant medicines as well it's actually moving us out of in out of our mind and the limitations it has and into our energy body and, and our body is expansive and it's it's limitless and it's about tapping into, you know, it's tapping into the force of energy that we have that makes our heart beat, that makes our lungs fill our body with oxygen. All of these unconscious um, systems and behaviors that are going on, us needing to actively remember, we, we need to tap into that in order to heal, yeah. in order to stay healthy as well. So, so yeah. I'm liking this one from Sharon. She said, meditation. <gasps> And my favourite, applying Abraham Hicks's advice. I teach Abraham Hicks. That changed my life. My background is, for anyone that doesn't know, I had 15 years of chronic fatigue, which was just, I just call it, it's like being a sports car that's stuck in first gear. No, stuck in reverse gear, let alone first gear, with flat tyres, handbrake on, no petrol in there. You just feel exhausted. And somehow I managed to cope, but I just knew there was something completely missing. And I think it's the electricity. Once you become aware of your energy and what gives you energy and using the Abraham Hicks stuff I just it is the focus of the mind if you focus on thoughts that feel good which I love that which are loving thoughts they have to be loving thoughts and if you just decide to go through life focusing on what brings you joy and what makes you laugh and what and Lisa you are one of those sources for me <laughs> that just that I just I'm just stimulated when you're around you know, uh, when you live a world in a world where you're stimulated by your environment, you're stimulated by the people in it, you're stimulated by 
um, the work you're doing, my God, you live on a different level, and your energy is constantly um, rejuvenated. And like you know, it's, and what, most of the world are reaching for coffee, energy drinks, because they've got they're in this world of I hate this, I can't stand what I'm doing, and it's fatiguing them, and they haven't made the connection between what they're thinking chronically and their energy state. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, we've never been taught it, I guess, really. Have no. we? So that's the thing. We, I mean, we're so lucky in, in these times that we have all of this information at our fingertips. In fact, we have too much of it. And this is kind of why we thought to engage the conversation, because, like, there's so much out there. There's so much that is really amazing. But one thing we were saying was, if you believe it, it will work for you. And I think yeah. the, the, the principle of the belief and our belief system coming in, like, into it, like, that that's the thing you know the abraham hicks like teachings as well like our brain basically wants you know like it's like a supercomputer that tells our body what to do and so you know they say a belief is a thought we think over and over and we so much so it's like reinforced a neural pathway in our brain and so then our body just goes you know it just follows the directions that we're given it so it's just about being mindful of what these neural pathways, what are the reinforced ways of things that we habitually do or say or think, like what are they? And and really look, so if there's any kind of tip I would give anyone, if you have any kind of health challenge or you're wanting to have the best health, is to actually be mindful and observe those things, like observing the things that we say about ourselves or what we believe, you know, what we yeah, like, and so therefore, like, the thoughts that we're thinking and the beliefs that we have. We become, isn't it? We become what we think. Yeah. So it was it man, as a man thinketh, he becometh? Is that a, have I just made that up, that biblical well, point? Yeah. But well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you don't eat, if you eat food that makes you vomit, you quickly, okay, eating this makes me respond in that way, and you cut it out your diet. Yet we, and I did this for 15 years, more than 15 we continually think thoughts that don't serve us and make us feel crap and zap us of our energy. But we continually think that we haven't realised in the same way the food makes us vomit. And if we stop eating that food, we feel better. We haven't made that mental connection that if we stop, if we think of something else that feels better to us, we function better. It took me well, to my mid thirties to realise that. Yeah. Well, I guess we're taught to think the worst or be prepared for the worst or, you know... There's, yeah, there's we're programmed. Kind of programmed uh, by, yeah, a negative and, society. Yeah, I mean... It's misfunction, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just a, it's a, it's a rewiring of how we look at things. But, um, yeah... I, Which is what this show's about, isn't it? If we can help with the rewiring, with well, your slow but steady and consistent rewiring... Well, yeah, so uh, yeah. that's the thing, is we just, I, I think this is definitely something you could talk, I mean, we're literally on for an hour talking about it already, like, we want to open it out, and, and maybe we can have, like, sessions where we talk about, you know, the traditional Chinese medicine, and how that works, and, like, what I find absolutely flabbergasting is the fact that we don't believe, or that there's not a recognition or acknowledgement of us having an energy system in our body in Western medicine, there's nothing yeah. that actually um that that kind of talks about that but whereas you know in chinese medicine there is in in the ayurvedic medicine there is and, and other you know different um philosophical philosophies and you know thought forms there are but then in our western medicine there isn't and so it's like well that's a big flag red flag for me like if we I don't think mechanistic are we like a, a machine we've seen in the west i remember if i remember the enlightenment and philosophy from the french revolution we was we viewed our science viewed our body as a machine, a mechanical device. The kind of the sen you know the concept of spirit is not really is not acknowledged in Western medicine as far no. as I'm aware. But so that is you know and again the the concept of God and a, a well are we in a world of well being or are we supported by angels all that kind of spiritual stuff? Yeah, it's just I mean that's, that's... by the West, isn't it? that's massive that's a massive i guess jump but i think the fact that you know we have a cardiovascular system we have a like um immune system we have our nervous system but we don't believe there is no element of um a uh, energy system for me it's just unbelievable so you know in um it, as far as i know in my medical training we taught you we energy derives from what we eat carbohydrates 
even that's wrong and we were just you know this is another conversation you know like all of the kind of um propaganda around low fat diets and and the fact that fat is bad and and yeah. you know like that, that's something else but so our western medicine is so limited and i think this is the thing is just being mindful that you know there's so much more actually out there that that we need to learn about and to take responsibility for our own health um to not just you know, rely on the nhs and going to the gp to, when we when we're not feeling right or when things are kind of out of balance we need to look at what's going on for ourselves and and to start taking responsibility for our own health and you know the first and foremost is nutrition um which is one of the topic that i really want Want to talk about and and invite someone on to the show to to talk with us because I think you know this everyone can learn a lot about you know gut health and all the different things about nutrition and diet and do a bit of the stuff that they tell us because it's so it's so confusing. And we were talking just to end on this another one you know the set we were talking about these kind of I guess crazy things that we find ourselves doing and thinking what on earth you know like what on earth am I doing. Um, I, I really want to write a book, actually, and uh, I was thinking I might call it like if my mum could see me now, because some of the things <laughs> I've tried to do to make myself better, like I was saying to you know the herbs that we were talking about, I was taking these Chinese herbs, literally looked like the stuff you'd scrape off when you walked through the woods. It was just yeah. a bit dark and stuff, and I had to boil that and drink it. But there was another thing I came across, um, a guy called the Medical Medium. Um, I'm sure there'll be a few people listening who might have Say heard that again, you broke up then, you distorted then as you said that. What was that? Someone who's called the medical medium. He's very famous. Tony Robbins actually um, talks about him and recommends him. And he's worked with like a multitude of celebrities. And he's basically a psychic who channels advice on health. He has no medical background. So I know a lot of people who are very cynical about this guy. But apparently he's helped lots of people heal. And I even went on one of his juice diets, uh, celery juicing, which was a lot of work, a lot of mess, and a lot of celery. <laughs> um, but even things like that, you know, I actually went to see a nutritionist to try and sort out my health and was actually advised to follow his protocol. And I couldn't believe there was a nutritionist actually medically trained as a, a dietitian nutritionist or whatever however it was and she was actually going to this guy who was a medical a medium of medicine <laughs> um so there's so much out there there's so much out there so it'd be interesting to hear i'm really keen to hear what have you done that has been crazy but has worked out or maybe crazy and, and you say don't touch this with a barge pole like let's share and let's learn from each other i'm really I'm interested to hear what people have done, what's worked, what you do, what you are passionate about. Um, yeah, let's uh, learn from each other. Yeah, so to wrap up then, because we've nearly done an hour, what, um, if anyone wants to reach out to us um, in between the shows, um, between the next two weeks, we've got a Facebook group, haven't we? Is, yes, is everyone on, on here really? on that? It's all, yeah, so have a conversation on that start the conversation on that we'll check in whenever we see updates on that and join in and yeah we're going to be posting we've done a call out for um guests haven't we we've done it in the blurb if you come through the meetup group yeah if you're interested in being part of this conversation on the show we can get you via the power of live streaming and wi-fi etc we can get you on the show you can be part of the show and yeah, no, it'd be really good. So yeah, do engage with us. Do tell us what we should be talking about, um, how we can continue this discussion, what we aren't talking about. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, we could talk more on these subjects as well, but we, we were thinking about talking about fear um, next time. So feeling the fear and doing it anyway, which is something I, I'm totally not, I'm just not a fan of. Um, and, and actually how to work through fear and, and move, yeah, like literally move free through fear. Um, so that's how we were thinking, to, not what we were thinking about talking about next next one in two weeks. But um, yeah. yeah, we're open to subjects that people would like us to, to discuss and open out and, and just share with us. Cool. So we'll wrap up now then. So in two weeks time, Fear by Lisa Fearon of Lisa <laughs> Fearon Coaching and Steve Scaredy Cat Surridge. I'm not Scaredy Cat. 
No call. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Have an amazing rest of your Tuesday. Um, have an amazing two weeks, and we'll see you real soon. See you Take in the care. group. Yeah. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.